Today, I'm going to walk through everything you need to know about converting an Epson EcoTank printer into a sublimation printer and help you choose the printer that's right for you. If you've already got a printer and you're ready to start converting it, use the chapters to skip ahead. Now you might be wondering, what is sublimation printing? Sublimation printing uses heat to turn special ink into gas, which then bonds directly to polyester or polycoated surfaces. The ink becomes part of the material itself, instead of just sitting on top like vinyl. That means the prints are vibrant and permanent. They won't peel, crack or fade over time, and you get a smooth, professional finish that feels like it's part of the fabric or item. You can either buy a specific sublimation printer, like a sawgrass printer, or you can convert an EcoTank printer into a sublimation printer, which is what we're going to do in this video. So why are people converting EcoTanks? Converting an EcoTank is a cheaper and easier alternative to buying a dedicated sublimation printer and you still get great print quality without the high price tag. Let's compare some of the Epson EcoTank models, their benefits and prices. The Epson EcoTank ET1810 is the cheapest model out there. Unfortunately, it tends to only be available in Australia and the UK. It prints in A4, doesn't have a screen, so you have to control it from your phone or computer using Wi-Fi. It doesn't have a copy or scan function. The Epson ET2800 and 2850 both have print, scan and copy functions. Then we have the 4800 which has an auto document feeder, a fax machine and the print yield is slightly higher which means you can get more prints out of your ink. Then we get into the A3 printers like the 15000. This is great if you want to make large format sublimation prints. A4 will suit most home crafters. Now let's talk about the ongoing consumables you'll need to keep your sublimation setup running smoothly. First off, you'll need sublimation ink. This is the main consumable. You'll need to top up your ink tanks roughly every three to six months, depending on how much you print. Make sure your ink is compatible with Epson print heads and comes with a refill system, either bottle nozzles or syringes. The next consumable is sublimation paper. Sublimation paper has a special coating that holds the ink before it transfers under heat. It's available in A4, A3 and roll formats depending on the printer type that you're using. Sublimation paper is one-sided, so make sure you're printing on the coated side which usually has a bright white finish and the watermark is on the back. You'll also need some heat resistant tape which will hold your design in place to avoid it shifting and ghosting. A cheap roll will last through many projects. You'll need butchers or blowout paper which protects surfaces during pressing and absorbs ink. Don't use a Teflon sheet as it can cause blurring or ghost transfers. And of course you'll need some sublimation blanks. Blanks including clothing, mugs, keychains or coasters to transfer onto. They must be polyester or polycoated. Now let's talk about warranty because this is really important. Converting an Epson EcoTank into a sublimation printer will void your warranty and here's why. Epson printers are designed to work with genuine Epson ink only. Sublimation ink is chemically different and not supported by Epson. Once you use third-party sublimation ink, Epson considers the printer tampered with, even if you never take it apart. So if something breaks, you're on your own. That said, I haven't heard too many people say this printer breaks down easily. Now let's get to the exciting part, converting your Epson EcoTank printer. Set up your printer normally, but do not use the included Epson ink. Locate the syringes in your sublimation ink packaging. Syringes come with a blunt needle, attach it firmly to the end of the plunger. Use a clean syringe for each colour. Make sure your printer is powered off for safety.
Insert the syringe into the ink bottle and slowly pull back the plunger to draw in the ink. Fill about 8 to 10 mils each at a time. Open the coloured cap on your eco tank that matches the ink you're using. Carefully insert the syringe tip into the tank opening and once inserted, gently push the plunger down to release the ink. Each time I checked the front of the printer to see the levels of ink in each of the tanks. Repeat the process for each colour. Turn on the printer and use the QR code to download the Epson app. Follow the prompts through the instructions, skipping the ink filling step. Let the printer run the ink charging process. This can take about six to seven minutes. This will pull the ink into the print heads the power button and the ink button will flash while it's doing this process. It should then set up the Wi-Fi. Print some test pages on regular paper until the ink is a little bit more vibrant. Now you can load your sublimation paper and print a test design. Choose premium presentation matte paper type and set your print quality to high. Make sure to mirror your image in the print settings, particularly if you're working with text. It's completely normal for your prints to look dull when you print them out. They will become more vibrant when heat is applied during the pressing process. Now let's test out our new printer. We're going to position the printout face down on our blank and secure it with heat tape. Press it using the correct time, temperature and pressure. That will typically be on the packaging for your sublimation paper. Once it's heated up, peel it off to reveal a vibrant permanent transfer. But be careful, the items will be hot. And now you know everything you need to know about sublimation printing. If this helped, please hit that like button, subscribe and comment below with what you're making first.